Ashley, I'm an occupational therapist here at Therapy Playground. This is Lena. She just finished her pediatric levitude field work with me. Uh, Lena, we would love to find out how this experience was for you. First, can you give us a little background as to how you got to be a level two student here? Yeah, sure. So first, I completed my undergrad at Loyola University in Chicago, where I majored in psychology. Then I knew I wanted to go to graduate school, so I was looking into occupational therapy programs. By that point, I had graduated Loyola, and there were some prerequisite courses that I had not completed. So I attended a community college for a semester and a half where I took courses such as anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, and other courses that were required to get me into the occupational therapy program. So um, now I, apl I applied, and I am attending the Masters of Science Occupational Therapy program at Winston-Salem State University and it, it is a two and a half year program where the first two years consist of coursework and the last six months consist of level two fieldwork. So during the first two years, we did have some level one fieldworks where it was mostly just observing and very little hands-on. So during these past six months, I have completed my level two fieldworks where it was more hands-on and I did it at two different locations with therapy playground being my last rotation. And as a level two student, we know that you're supposed to act as a treating therapist. Can you describe some of the diagnoses and ages that you've seen here? Yes, so we see kids as young as 12 months old to as old as 12 years old. And some diagnoses includes kids who are on the autism spectrum, kids who have ADHD, PDD, and CP, and treatment sessions include focusing on how to help the child improve their functioning and activities of daily living. And we also see kids who are typically developing and who have maybe low tone um, impacting their function or kids who need help with handwriting skills. That is correct. <laughs> um, how would you describe the evaluation process in the pediatric setting? Um, well, I have found the evaluation process to have many different components, so it sometimes feels like you're juggling a lot of things at once. So the evaluation includes using a standardized assessment, so we use either the BOT for older kids ages 5 and up or the Peabody for kids ages 4 and younger. And it also includes interviewing the parent or caregiver about the child's abilities and activities of daily living. So we ask things about like dressing, bathing, toileting, um, feeding, things like that. And we also administer a questionnaire, um, which is now in an electronic format called the Sensory Processing Measure. And it consists of questions that the parents answer about the child's um, sensory processing skills. So this helps us determine if there are any sensory processing deficits that we may need to address during therapy. And next, that there are clinical observations that we do. So um, things like how the child reacts on the ball or on the swing um, or any other floor activities. And we also assess their strength. Um, and then the therapist has to score the assessment, interpret the results, develop goals, and set up a possible time and date of when to start therapy if services are recommended. Uh, can you give me your op opinion on those treatment sessions that we've done? Yeah, so the treatment sessions are really fun because you get to interact with the kids and during the treatment sessions we do activities in order to work on goals that were established in the child's plan of care. So usually we start off here in the gross motor room and we do things like obstacle courses, um, or exercises to improve the child's core strength or upper body strength or we do sensory activities like swinging on the various types of swings that we have here then we transition into the fine motor room um, where the kids sit at the table and perform fine motor activities such as handwriting or crafts that include things like cutting or using other visual motor skills and we like to switch up activities and make it fun for the child so it doesn't have to be done exactly in that order. For example, we can work on handwriting at the chalkboard um, in the gross motor room. It doesn't always have to be at the table. And I've also come to realize that you can't work on every single goal that the child has during one treatment session because it's only 45 minutes to an hour so that can carry over to next time. 
So as you stated earlier, you had pediatric courses in school. Um, can you tell me how this level two is compared and contrasted to what you've learned? Yeah, so I have learned the most during my pediatrics lab courses where we were um, able to do more hands-on things. Um, so, for example, during labs, we had several assessments that we had to figure out how to administer them and how to score them. So this is similar to field work here um, because we have the two assessments that I have previously mentioned, the BOT and the Peabody. Um, but of course, this is different and more fun because I'm able to um, administer them in a real clinical setting to the patients instead of to, to students. Um, and also in my pediatric class, we had a sensory lab where we did a lot of things like spinning, jumping, pulling, wearing body socks, and walking around, which is really fun. But the, it was a good experience um, to experience all the effects of vestibular and proprioceptive input that um, may have, may impact the, the child. So overall, it's just best to experience um, actually being in this pediatric clinical environment, um, which I'm getting through field work. And I'm able to apply things I've learned in the classroom to a real setting. Uh, how, would, how do you feel about communicating with the parents? Um, so, so parents either choose to stay in our waiting room or to come back and observe the treatment sessions. Um, so if they stay in the waiting room, I would explain to them what we did during the therapy session and what we worked on. And we also provide the parent with education regarding anything that they could be doing at home um, or uh, any, any gross motor, um, upper body strengthening, or fine motor activities. Um, so body strengthening activities would include things like doing animal walks at home, um, or any other exercises and fine motor activities would be things like doing puzzles or working with Play-Doh. Um, and this is important because we see the kids for 45 to 60 minutes at a time, um, once or twice a week. So it's important that the parents provide good carryover at home um, of therape therapeutic strategies in order to make sure that the child is maximizing his or her potential. Um, what other disciplines have we worked with? Um, here at Therapy Playground, we have occupational therapists, physical therapists, and speech therapists. So we have co-treated with speech and physical therapy um, when it was necessary to enhance therapeutic handling strategies due to kids who maybe were physically aggressive or for kids who were very low functioning. Uh, what types of assignments and research have you had to do here? Well, making this podcast was part of my... Um, assignments as a level two student, just talking about my experiences, but other assignments include doing research um, and literature, a literature review on a pediatric topic of my choice. So I decided to do research on the Wilbarger protocol to see what studies and other research have been done on that. And I also researched any terms or diagnoses that I was unfamiliar with. So things like the astronaut program or therapeutic listening, um, which I knew little about, but these things are being done here in the clinic. Uh, so what has been the most challenging part of your level two experience here at Therapy Playground? Well, I would definitely say that the most challenging part is managing difficult behaviors. Um, it is always great when kids do things exactly how you ask, but that is definitely not the way that things go. Um, and I find it difficult to know the line exactly of when to give the child space to kind of calm, calm down or when to continue to redirect them and continue to in in intervene. Uh, what has been the most rewarding part? The most rewarding part of this entire experience is to see progress in the kids. So now that I have been working with the kids for almost three months, I know their, um, their abilities and I know what they can do. So it is rewarding when they do something more challenging um, or just something new that they haven't done before. That is great. Thank you for um, all of your insight. It was awesome having you here as my first level two student. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. Your balance is still. <laughs>